Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello dear students, today we are going to have a discussion on relationships among the dimensions of learning and this is the second part of uh, our discussion on dimensions of learning given by Marzano. I am Dr. Iram Khan, Assistant Professor at IASC, Faculty of Education, Jamia Millia Islamia, New Delhi. So in the previous part of dimensions of learning video, we have seen the Marzano's view on uh, dimensions of learning. And in the present discussion, we will see how the dimensions work together in the form of a model and what are their uses in the teaching learning process. So first, let us have a recap of uh, Marzano's dimensions of learning. Uh, we have seen that Marzano has given uh, different uh, dimensions and there are five dimensions which are given by Marzano. So we will just see one by one. Uh, those dimensions. The, the first dimension give, given by Marzano is uh, the attitudes and perceptions. So what exactly uh, Marzano means by attitudes and perceptions? Basically, uh, attitudes and perceptions belong to the effective teacher's understanding that all te teaching and learning activities are filtered through students' attitudes and perceptions. So we can say that effective teachers understand that all learning activities are filtered through students' attitudes and perceptions. So this was the first dimension. Then the second dimension is knowledge application. According to this uh, knowledge application dimension, effective teachers help students to acquire new knowledge by encouraging them to relate new knowledge with what they have already known and by providing them with opportunities to organize information in ways that uh, facilitate learning. So whatever is previously understood by the learners or the, uh, on the basis of the previous knowledge attained by a student, uh, we actually constitute the new knowledge. So new knowledge actually is based on the premises of the previous understanding and previous knowledge. So this is the second dimension. Then the third dimension, which is extension of knowledge. Effective teachers help learners to refine and extend their knowledge by providing opportunities for them to use higher order thinking skills. So this is the third dimension which actually talks about the higher order thinking skills. Then the uh, fourth dimension is using knowledge in a meaningful manner. So effective teachers involve students in long-term self-directed projects that require investigation, decision-making, research, problem-solving, and intervention so that uh, they can use whatever knowledge they have acquired in a very meaningful manner for their further studies. So this was the dimension number four. Then the fifth dimension says, uh, it is it actually uh, is stated as habits of mind so uh, in this case effective teachers help students to avoid impulsive actions and develop sensitivity to feedback desire for accuracy and persistence in the face of difficulty so these uh, five are the uh, dimensions which were mentioned or which were given by Marzano. So uh, like all these five dimensions work together and they work in a very orderly manner and uh, here in this uh, particular discussion we will see that uh, in which way Marzano has given a kind of model in which all these five dimensions actually work together. So we will see uh, how it happens.
uh, basically uh, if we we want to check the relationship among the dimensions of learning it is very important to realize that the five dimensions of learning do not operate in isolation but they work together in a manner in which they can be actually uh, in like they can work in in a way where one is actually facilitating the other so uh, there is one model one diagram through which all these uh, dimensions relationship has been shown so we will just see that what exactly this time this dimension like model model of dimensions of learning uh, is actually uh, looked alike so you can see here that uh, this particular uh, circular diagram is shown and uh, if if we just go and an analyze this uh, diagram uh, we can see that uh, it shows that all learning takes place against the backdrop of learners attitudes and perceptions which is the first dimension and their use or lack of use means if they are not using uh, that particular skill in that case uh, productive habits of minds are actually produced which is the dimension number 5 so if students have negative attitudes and perceptions about learning then they will likely learn little if they have positive attitudes and perceptions they will learn more and learning will be easier similarly when students use productive habits of mind these habits facilitate their learning so dimension number one and five you can see here in this diagram um, actually uh, are always factors in the learning process this is why they are part of the background of the graphic which is shown here in this figure so you can see that dimension number one and five are actually outside the circles when positive attitudes and perceptions are in place and productive habits of mind are being used learners can more effectively do the thinking required in uh, in the other three dimensions that is acquiring and integrating knowledge which is the dimension number two extending and refining knowledge which is the dimension number three and using knowledge meaningfully which is dimension number four you can notice the relative positions of uh, these circles of dimension number two three and four here in this diagram so you, we, we can just uh, make a, a statement that the circle representing meaningful use of knowledge subsumes the other two and this circle representing extending and refining knowledge subsumes the circle representing acquiring and integrating knowledge you can see here in this diagram so this communicates that when learners extend and refine knowledge they continue to acquire knowledge and when they use knowledge meaningfully they are still acquiring and extending knowledge in other words the relationships among these circles represent types of thinking that are neither discrete nor sequential they represent types of thinking that interact and that in fact may be occurring simultaneously during the learning process so uh, we can say that it might be useful to consider the dimensions of learning a learning model as providing a metaphor for the learning process then dimensions of learning offers a way of thinking about the extremely complex process of learning so that we can attend to each aspect and gain insights into how they interact if it serves this purpose it will be a useful tool as uh, we attempt to help students in their teaching and learning process in the process of their uh, uh, like gaining the uh, the learning which uh, which is actually expected uh, from them to uh, to acquire so now let us come to the uses of dimensions of learning so uh, we can say that as uh, a comprehensive model of learning dimensions can have an impact on uh, virtually every aspect of education because the major goal of education is to enhance learning it follows uh, that our system of education must focus on a model that represents criteria for effective learning criteria that we must use to make decisions and evaluate programs and although dimensions is uh, certainly not the only model of learning 
uh, it is a powerful tool for ensuring that learning is the focus of what we do as educators, as teachers. It should uh, validate current efforts in schools and classrooms to enhance learning, but should also suggest ways of continuous improvement. How a teacher can uh, actually improve herself or himself continuously. So if we if we try to make an analysis of all those uh, dimensions, we will get to an um, a kind of conclusion that what what are those capabilities what are those uh, things which we can acquire we can learn from the dimensions and make ourselves a better teacher so the uses of dimensions of learning are actually uh, many more which are stated here so we uh, as a teacher we have to uh, actually make an analysis and uh, just think about that how we can uh, make our teaching learning process much more effective in a way that we we can make our students much more interested in the classroom. So this was uses of dimensions of learning. So with this, we are now at the uh, final part. We are now going to summarize this uh, particular model. Uh, we have seen uh, that uh, how the different dimensions of learning go hand in hand, which is explained by Marzano in the form of a model. And what are their uses in the le teaching learning process? So in the next uh, video, we will discuss the Bloom's taxonomy of thinking skills to understand more effectively the whole concept of dimensions of learning. Because Bloom's have, uh, Bloom has given actually a, a different perspective in terms of uh, cognition and in terms of thinking uh, in which uh, in a way that uh, we can understand much more properly these dimensions. So the, to, to have another aspect of basically the dimensions of learning, we have to go ahead with studying Bloom's taxonomy of thinking skills, which we will be studying in the next part of the session. I hope that you all have understood the points covered in today's lecture. I hope to see you again. Thank you so much.